Hello, Hairbrain friends. Here we are at Serenity Hair Lounge in New Jersey for HB Live number 59. Tonight we're featuring Marina Lanto. Say hi, Marina. Hi. hi, guys. And her gorgeous model, Jordan, who's also a hairdresser, so she'll be chiming in too. We've got this incredible color, which I'm sure you'll all be asking about, and we'll talk about that. But let's get right into the haircut. Marina's known for beautiful precision work, and she's going to get started right now with some fantastic graduation for you. So let's get a look at that. All right, so as Gerald mentioned, I am going to do graduation, so which I feel like if you followed me on Instagram, you've seen me do a lot of bobs, a lot of graduation. So um, I do have to admit that is probably one of my favorite techniques, one of my favorite haircuts to do. I think it's classic and at the same time could be as creative as you want it to be. So for uh, Jordan's haircut today, I'm going to be doing graduation first and then go ahead and cut the line afterwards. So while I'm cutting graduation, a couple of things that I pay attention to is my elevation and my over direction. So elevation is how much lift I create in the hair and then over direction is where I'm bringing the hair. So here's my first section. My first section, which is my cutting line that I put in through here is going to be dictating what the shape of the graduation that I'm creating. How did you know to take exactly that much off? Uh, visual, yes. so it's not about how much hair you cut off. It's how much hair you leave on the head. So determining kind of the cutting angle, do you look at the, the shape of the skull or where you want the weight to sit? Yeah, absolutely, exactly that. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking where I want the graduation sort of sit in. So I'm painting this picture in my head where the shortest piece is going to be and where the longest piece is going to be. All right, so guys, I, so I'm monitoring all the questions here. We've got all of our friends, your buddy Matthew, Mr. Scribbles. He hi says Maddie. he's a little bit upset that you're not cutting at his old station. Oh, so God. We'll talk a little bit <laughs> about that. He made sure that I say hello to you. Yep. So he must be up very late tonight because yeah, I know he's in Croatia. And uh, lots, of, uh, lots of our regulars are joining in. I saw Patty Gibbons there. Hi and Patty. again, guys, I always ask you to, to hit the share button because we make sure all the right people get to see this great lesson. Let's get back to Marina's graduation. All right, so now that I established the guide, I took section on my one side, then I do the same exact sectioning on the opposite side. I wanna make sure that my balance is correct on both sides. Uh, uh, since I created the guide on both sides, now I can go ahead and do one side um, at a time. So, so my, you kind of, to get your guide, you go back and forth and then you focus on one side? You know, it depends, it, depends on the, it depends what I'm doing. So mm -hmm. if my sections are changing, then I try to go back and forth, back and forth, because I want to make sure as the, the sections are changing, I am making sure the balance is right. So, so by changing, you mean like pivoting? Pivoting, or, yep. Or here you're taking just consistent sections, so parallel I, sections? I am gradually pivoting the section because I want the section, I want the graduation to sit in pretty lean. Can you and show then, us what the pivot looks like? Yeah, so my section went from being really vertical and then gradually getting a little tiny bit higher and wider, a little bit higher and wider. So I started off with vertical section and then eventually I'm gonna get pretty, pretty horizontal. So, and the reason for it is I want my graduation to sit it leaner and then gradually get heavier and heavier. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue until I get to the top of the ear, which is a good point or a good place to stop. Do the other side, cross check for balance and then go ahead uh, continue with one side or the other. So you chose uh, Marina to just go right in without any kind of uh, an outline. Um, are there sometimes, I know as you mentioned before, you have all these great videos on Instagram and again we had so many people tell us you have to feature Marina, she's doing such great education. Um, and I see sometimes you'll put in a baseline and sometimes you won't. Can you give the viewers any kind of um, advice there as to how you choose? Yes. So this has been conversation going on in the salon for Well, for it's been going while. on since I think <laughs> Vidal picked up a pair of since, scissors. Since before I, was, yeah. uh, before I was a hairdresser. Exactly. So and it will go on forever. I'm going yeah. to tell you how I feel about it. Yeah. I don't enjoy doing graduation first and then line after because the reason why I love graduation is I love the process of it. I love how it looks. I love how it feels on the head, all of those things. So if I don't do outline first and I go in with graduation, it does not look as pretty as the process is happening. So for me, I most of the time do an outline first and then go ahead with graduation. 
But the technical reason for it is if you're going to keep your line heavier and, le and, and heavier of a graduation, you should do external shape. So you outline first. And if and you, you are going to graduate and graduate off it. Yeah. Yep. yep. So it's whether you want to create a guide on your outline first, right? Or sit in the graduation. I like how you said though, you know, if you put the baseline in first and you start to graduate, you can have the, uh, that like, ah, uh, moment where it all uh, looks so pretty. It's just, you know, you kind of want to go. Yeah, when you go what? in and you just start graduating sometimes, <laughs> yeah. you know. Guys, what do I always do? Boop, boop. Yep, yeah. which is like, yeah, is you know, Is that a technical term in the game? Yeah, you know, when that bomb You gotta give just, it a little boop. Yeah, when yeah. it just wants to, you know. Right on. That so beautiful pretty. contour of graduation, you yeah. guys call it the boop? Is the, that what it is? The, yeah. Okay, got the it. The double got boop. It. Right on. Our yeah. buddy Jay Mahmood just joined in. Thank you, Jay. Always, always spread the love around the world. Um, so, of course, we definitely have some people just gasping about how insane the color is. Yeah. We're going to talk about that a little bit. So, Marina, again, catch us up on the haircut, and then we'll take a minute to talk about the color here. So I established my guide right to the top of the obon, to the top of the ear. That's where my sections were pivoting. And then from that point, they are going to follow the same um, section as I created. So now on the other side, I'm doing exactly the same thing. The only thing that's going to change is I lowered the chair a little bit so that it will be more convenient for me. And my fingertips are now pointing down while knuckles are pointing up. The reason for it is I want to make sure that I'm combing the hair exactly the same way as I did on the left side as I am on the right side. So lots of cup love coming in. Jason Anderson, an old friend of mine, says we always talk about the hands, and she's definitely got them. Thank yeah. you. You know, some hands are just made for precision haircutting. They really are. Um, and I definitely agree, and you can see that in old Marina's videos. I see you've got a little uh, smiley face on your finger. This is for Maddie. This That's is Maddie awesome. right here. Got you, girl. Awesome. Yeah. Who's Maddie? Tell us. Maddie, your buddy Matt okay, from right Croatia. On. Right on, right on. He was, uh, Maddie came um, uh, as, a, as a thing, as a real thing, many, many years ago. And it was Matt's birthday. Matt, I'm going to shut you out on this one. Okay. Mr. Scribbles. Mr. Scribbles came to a bar for his birthday, and he said, Marina, I almost died just now. I go, oh, really? What happened? He was like, I choked on toothpaste. I choked. It's true story. <laughs> so Mallory, right over here to the right of us, she's we'll got one. You, her name, she's got a tattoo also. Her name is Joy. So I decided to name my tattoo after Matt. In, in, in so that's a real tattoo. tattoo on your finger. It's a real tattoo. That's amazing. It's a real tattoo. That's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, I love so when you see something you've never seen before. Again, catch us up on the haircut because that graduation is just building beautifully. You definitely picked the perfect hair texture Absolutely. to graduate. Yeah, she's got so, great head so shape. So talk to us again about the technique and then, you know, maybe a little bit about, about how you chose this technique for her hair. Uh, okay, so I'm still continue pivoting, so my sections are getting a little tiny bit higher. And you seem to be taking hair from the, the left side of the head? I am, so not actually taking the hair, but I am using that hair as a cross check. Got it. So my sections are getting leaner or, or more and more horizontal to make sure that my graduation eventually will sit in more heavier so i'm prepping myself for a horizontal section so for the people that just joined you basically started by kind of cutting in the angle on let's say a, a vertical diagonal quite vertical and yep. slowly pivoted yep so and the my hair that you just took you're going to use as your guide the hair on the left side is uh -huh. that what you mean yeah yeah so i always subsection the other side because the hair that came from the opposite side is now also my guide so now it's a reference yeah. it's a reference so yep. you've got the hair from yep, the underneath it. and the hair on the opposite side yeah um, some people are referring to this as triangular graduation is that something that, that technique or term that you use I or what do you call it I would agree with that or yeah. I would call it graduation or kind of an a-line graduation or sure it's highest in the center and it's gonna go lower and lower towards the yep. front yep yeah so I am actually following the head shape a little bit more in the middle through here, so it's a bit more rounded shape. It's and kind, then of like, it, kind of like a boomerang shape, huh? A boomerang. Like a half a half moon that descends. We, we can absolutely. I've done this once or twice days. myself. <laughs> yeah, back in the day when I used to cut. When you cut hair, hair. I heard <laughs> I heard you only uh, do now hair on Hair Brain Live. Yes, I only do videos and now. Only well, with the razor. Yeah, I, do, I do clients. I do clients. But no, it's funny. So many people recently have been coming up and saying, "We love the videos. We love the videos." You know, do you cut hair anymore? You know, just because I get so excited to work with so many great hairdressers, I don't want it to be just me cutting hair. That's hey, why I did one you. this week. And that's why I'm super excited to be here. I watched it and it was phenomenal. Yeah, thank you for joining. Super excited to be here with Marina. 
doing this beautiful technical haircut. Talk a little bit about the color because there's been tons of questions about the color. All right, so the color, I'll tell you what I know about it. Tell us what you I know. did double process. So Jordan came in with a handful of roots. A handful. <laughs> a handful of roots. <laughs> So I did double process to give us a clean palette. She was already blonde on mid shaft and ends. And then, what was the name of the color? It's Pravana Vivid. Pravana Neon Yellow. Neon Yellow by Pravana Vivid. So it's something you've never used before. Jordan brought it. Jordan's also a hairdresser. She actually yeah. works with our good friend Emily Costello in Philadelphia at X. Yeah. Say hi, Jordan. Hi. Just don't move your head. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you don't like a moving target? Oh my god. <laughs> We leave that for our clients, right? Okay, so we've got a good question coming in from Michaela Hines or Michaela Hines. Um, how do you cross-check this, and um, do you do it as you're going along, or do you wait to the end? Great question. So for those of you that are less comfortable with graduations, I would highly recommend cross-checking every three sections. Just for the purpose of making it a little bit more entertaining for you guys, I am not cross-checking in my I'm going to keep my fingers crossed You're on the tight that rope. I'm going to do a really great job. <laughs> You're on the tightrope. So, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And hope yeah. for the best. Uh, but a cross check is always going to be the opposite sectioning from what the sections that you uh, held while you were cutting. So I'm going to demonstrate how I would cross check my left side of my graduation. So I had diagonal section. I'm going to keep my section diagonal going the opposite direction and then elevate and over direct as I was cutting the opposite side. So you angled and here's my cross check. forward while you, you were cutting. You can zoom in on this because yep. the yeah. <laughs> yeah. look as good as this. It's like a sheet of paper. Yes. Yeah. Those fingers are magical. Yeah. All right. It's really the comb. It's the comb. There's been a question about the comb, or at least a shout out from Chris Garcia. Is that a Sessi Bond comb? Yes, yes it, is. it is. We call it the Sessi Bomb. At Hairbrained, we made a, a white version a few years That's ago. Right. So uh, this was a gift given to me by Mr. Jason Hunt. He was oh, right here on. a couple of weeks ago. Cool. So as soon as I told him that I will be hanging out with you guys, he was like, well, then you need to put down your YS Park home. <laughs> right on. <laughs> and he's no, we're right we're lovers of YS Park too, but you know, I'm old school. When I started at Sassoon, we didn't even really have YS Park. So we worked with um, Starflight was the first one. Do you even know what those are? <laughs> Starflight was like the gray cutting comb. Then the Sessi Bond, Sessi Bond came out and was like, oh, wow, this is incredible. And we used that for years. And then it moved into YS Park. Wow. But we're still a lot of classic Sassoon cutters still love the Sessi Bond. And we made it in white just to give it a change because it had been green for 30 years. All right, let's get back into this haircut here. We're having too much fun, but let's get back into this incredible lesson. Okay, so now that I am working above the round of the head, so working above the occipital bone, <clears throat> my sections are now continuing staying exactly the same. So however your horizontal or how vertical your section was to the top of the ear, I am continuing going exactly same sectioning. And my elevation is into the previous, which means with each section I'm higher up the head, which means I'm going to elevate the hair just a tiny bit higher. My over direction, what I'm paying attention to is where the hair grows right from the scalp. So wherever it grows, I'm going to bring that piece of hair directly back and then, um, how would I word this, 90, not like natural perpendicular, fall? perpendicular from where the hair grows. Natural fall would be a round shape, right? Because naturally hair grows here, 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 and here. So I wanna gra grab the hair from the point where it grows and bring it T to the part which is one of the, um, I want to say Tony and Guy maybe. Yeah, T to the part was pretty typically a Tony and Guy. Uh, but I mean, I think nowadays everything has to be a hybrid. There's been so many great systems out there Absolutely. in the past 30 years that if you're stuck in one system, you're limiting yourself. Absolutely. So you should learn from agree. all the different systems out there and start to make your own. Lots of love coming in. You've got a great uh, following right now. You've got over 730 live viewers which is a great number people are super excited awesome. some people are really impressed with the color some people are a little scared by it <laughs> but you like it don't you but you are a hairdresser and you can work yeah. it yeah. that's right absolutely so and also jay mahmoud loves your haircut marina thank so you've you you've got a great haircut Ooh. yeah thank all right you. so let's get back into the technique so now you're starting to get above the round of the head yep how does your thought process change here i notice you're elevating a bit more Tell us why. So I want the bob to sit in with a little bit more movement. So I believe I was hearing you talk about, or um, maybe Julian, talk about 
where yeah, we're hard know, to tell apart. I know you guys. Just a bunch of gorillas. Like, yeah. A bunch of gorillas <laughs> that cut hair. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, either you want to do point A to point B reference where if you want to build graduation from point A to point B and everything else needs that point, or do you want to build the graduation and then have movement on top of it? So build my graduation, which was underneath the round of the head, and everything else through the top, I want it to still have soft movement. So I don't want it to sit really heavy on the top because... Uh, bleached hair, I find that if it's processed hair, it always reacts a little bit different than natural texture. So I don't want it to sit where it's just kind of shelfy, um, if that's a, a good word to use. Yep. So this way, if I elevate just a tiny bit with each section, I will create a bit more movement. So I'm almost like layering at this point, but since my length underneath is still shorter than the length that I'm creating now, it's still going to be a pure graduation. So here's what I've noticed right away. I used almost the same exact sectioning on HB Live number 58 the other night, but I cut with a razor. So I used that kind of diagonal forward through the underneath to mm -hmm. build graduation, and then I broke it up on the top. So I think it's a, a very similar sectioning pattern, which I think is great to show how universal yeah. things can be, but you're just cutting it laser clean, and I cut it with a lot of texture and I was kind of slicing through as I was cutting. So that's a great lesson yeah, which, right there. Which is fantastic to remove all that weight and, and heaviness of the hair. I know she you do some razor cutting. She you, you, did a lot she of She had hair. a yeah. lot of hair. <laughs> yeah, I noticed you do a bit of razor cutting in some of your videos. You know, so yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, they good because I make it one minute and it's super sped up. I am not a comfortable. <laughs> so it makes you look like you have a good stroke. Yeah, yeah. yeah you right. know, I took a class, uh, this really awesome dude uh, whose name is um, Jacob. From Atlanta, he oh Jacob Kahn. Jacob Kahn, yeah, yep. yeah. He flew out and gave me a, a razor cutting class, cool. which I was afraid for my life. <laughs> I still but you had did. all my, still have all my fingers, and I'm afraid every single time I pick it up, I feel like I'm going to cut my hands off. But um, I love the end result that it gives. You know, it gives so much movement and texture in the hair. I uh, don't think I would be doing a bob with a razor. I feel like I would not be comfortable with that yeah the thing with the razor is the simplest things are the hardest you know so like just putting in a little line it's obviously easy and fun to take weight out and yeah. texturize and slice but you know you're, you're wise to think you know take time to get to the <laughs> yep. to the things like the line so here's a great a great question coming in um, from Gretchen who perhaps isn't a hairdresser but she obviously is loving the haircut and she said what would a client ask in hopes of getting a haircut like this like what, what would someone, how would they describe this to you? Which I think is a great question because lots of times yeah. clients don't really know. I think the really popular words that, that clients use is stack. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Um, or anything, if they're going to use words like, I don't want hair to flip out. I want it to follow the head shape. I want more movement in the back. I want to sit in. Those are the words that are pretty popular to describe this haircut. Do you get a lot of clients, you know, one thing, like as a hairdresser, when I hear the word asymmetric, it means something to me. But I always get clients, when they want something like A-line, they call it asymmetric, too. And I sometimes have to be like, asymmetric, do you mean this or do you yes. mean that? Yes, and yep. I'm really quick to correct a client, too, because I want to make sure that they tell yeah. me the right thing. I've had clients tell you, you know, I want it above the hairline, and then you're like, no, you don't. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So it's usually I'll ask the in very non-technical words. Even even when I'm talking to a hairdresser, I try not to use such technical terms because technical ter term for you and for me might mean something a little bit different. So if I say asymmetrical, you're going to think one side is going to be shorter than the other. Right. If I say shorter in the back, longer in the front. Or A-line, yeah, yep. you might get it. Yep, absolutely. So some, some questions coming in about the tools. Um, Someone here asked what kind of clips. Those are YS Park clips. They're called L clips. And I think most precision hair cutters really prefer them. You can get those on hairbrain.pro as well as the Ceci Boncombe. Now tell us about what scissor you're using. There's been several questions about what kind of scissors you like. And look These at, I just are, love, look at that shot of the green, China. yellow, green tennis ball hair on the scissor. That's amazing. <laughs> yep. This is uh, Hikari New Cosmos 5.5. That's the way to go. Love that. <clears throat> Beautiful scissor. Can't go wrong with a Hikari yes. New Cosmo. All right, excellent. So now we're caught up on that. Uh, a couple questions. One coming in from Rebecca Gross. Was the hair prepped with any product prior to cutting? Everyone's like, it's staying so clean and damp. 
this might have a little to do with the porosity. Uh, hi. Yep. <laughs> this is water. This is water. <laughs> this is water and a good shampoo in the conditioner. Yeah. What, will... what do you use for product here at, at Serenity? Uh, Marina has her own salon. The staff is here. Oh, everyone's watching. They all seem very engaged. A good team of people. Um, so at Serenity, what products do you guys use? We have Kevin Murphy styling products. Kevin Murphy styling products. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have Well I Hair Color. Awesome. Seems like you guys have, have a good team here and you're all we enjoy do. being together. Awesome. We like each other. Okay, so I have a great another question coming in from Michaela Hines who asked before. She wants to know about tension. Is cutting tension the same for you all the way through or using less over the ears? Tell us a little bit about tension in this type of haircut. You know, I think tension changes uh, from hair from head of hair to another head of hair, not necessarily within one haircut. Obviously, if I'm going to do someone's fringe, I will change the tension. But with graduation, it's such a precision of a, of a technique. I think tension needs to always stay very similar um, throughout the haircut. So my tension on Jordan's haircut is from the beginning till the end exactly the same. Attention tension is going to change if I'm worried about hair behind the ear, but I'm not worried about that because I'm doing the outline afterwards and it's going to go above the graduation line. So I don't have to worry about worrying about those pieces being so imperfect. So tons of people are just joining live now, Marina. Can you recap the haircut? Maybe take a second to explain how you've gotten to this point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna finish this section right over here because my OCD will kick in. And that would not be a good idea to stop in the middle. All right, so to recap, I took a center part because uh, we have a fringe, so we don't have to worry about side part. My first section was from the top of the head right to the nape area, vertical section. My sections were really lean. If you can tell how steep this graduation sitting in, right? This is all gonna be gone afterwards, so you can tell how head-hugging this is. So my first section was pretty lean, and then I started pivoting until I got to the top of the ear. From this point, my section stayed the same and over elevation gradually with each section got higher and higher. And now above the round of the head, you kind of change it up a little bit. Um, my elevation continues going just above the, the previous. So and always below the section that you're working on, obviously, because otherwise you're going to be removing weight and graduation is a buildup of weight. And again, lots of people are just joining us asking about the color. So uh, Jordan, who's a hairdresser, say hi, Jordan. Hi. hi. She had her hair uh, pre-lightened. Uh, did Marina or someone here do you do color as well, Marina? I, I do. Yes. I do mostly cutting, but I also do color. So, so I you pre did it, it. You pre-lightened, did a double process. What did you use for lightener? We used Blondor and 20 volume. And was it a pretty straight up process or did you have some, you know, it was they roots. say every, every color is a color correction, right? I, it was an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, we did the roots. We let it sit, sit on for a little bit and then they ran the color, ran the lightener through just a little bit to get rid of a bit more of a band that uh, Jordan had. And then what created this fabulous neon kind of highlighter yellow? <clears throat> so this is all thanks to Pravana Vivids, which is kind of amazing that it changes color as I'm cutting. I feel like the ends are a greener and neon-y and the roots are a bit more yellow. I mean, it's just Now, are you doing amazing. a lot of this type of work in the salon or is this just something one-off for fun? I, I, I see a lot of this type of stuff on Instagram. I, I, you know, I wonder how, you know, you have a real salon here. You've got about 10 stylists. You're kind of in the, in the middle of New Jersey. Are you doing a lot of these kind of neon colors on customers? We, Unfortunately, or fortunately, oh, yeah. we don't. <laughs> I don't know how many we can handle doing this. Yeah. You know, anytime you do really work, creative work, yeah. you yeah. need a lot of time, and, and unfortunately, that's not what pays the bills. It's kind of, you can well, and maintenance enough, right? as well. And maintenance is, is amazing. Huge. Yeah. So uh, we don't, but we do. We, we have some creative stuff that's coming in. We just did blue, which is Fallon right over here. Did blue and and, and purple on the girl the other day. We do a lot of grays. We do pretty creative color instead of shocking creative color. Um, awesome. Yeah. How long, now tell us a little bit about the salon. How long have you been in business now? And I, I guess I know you for a long time. I think I know you, you, you were starting you, out as a hair I, cutter. I knew you from when, man, before I, I even became a stylist. Right. That's so awesome. That was about 12, 12 years, I would say. I think Tim, Tim Hartley cut your hair once, right? He used you as a model yeah, at a Davinus yeah. event. Like, yeah. I don't know. Just found that about. picture. Yeah. <laughs> 
I remember I that. I don't even, I'm not even going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> not even going to say what I looked like yeah. that day. I, I can remember Tim Hortley cutting your hair, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 years yeah, ago. Yeah, there was some like obscene that. words going on in the yeah. screen. Yeah. <laughs> it was a real good time. Yeah. Worked yeah. with my good friend Christine for a while. I did. Yeah, that was she been a, a mentor to you. Life. Yep, so yeah. that's where I got my beginning on my training. Yep. Many, many moons ago. And then, you know, lots of people tuning in always want to, you know, know about the career path. How did you get to the point of going from that to owning a salon? Looks like you have a great salon. You have at least 10 staff here. We do. Two, two big Thank rooms. You. Tell uh, us a little so bit about that. We've been in that. business for eight and a half years. Um, my business partner is right over there, Jessica. Yeah. Oh, hey, Jess. uh, so I don't know how I became a hairdresser. I've never been girly. Um, you know, and then I... Me neither. Uh, and I, I, you know? I, I, I figured with your curls, yeah. you look... I just wipe my hands. <laughs> uh, so the career path, I started doing hair, and I realized that it's, it's so much like architecture and building shapes and, and making things come alive in three-dimensional form. So Christine, as you mentioned, taught me the beginner, you know, the, the foundation of education, and I learned that... It's not necessarily just cutting hair, it's sharing the knowledge that really spoke to me. So throughout 12 and a half, 13 years of a of career that I have had, I've had you know so many different educators share the knowledge with me. And, uh, hair salon, actually, honestly, salon came about because I couldn't find a perfect job. So Justin and I got together and created that perfect job. And now I, think we have, I think that's how a lot of um, hairdressers become salon owners. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that's a, a good thing or a bad thing, because it says there's so many salons people don't want to work in. Yeah. But it's a good thing because we're so entrepreneurial and we always think we can make something better. Yeah. But you know, it's funny because I never wanted to be a salon owner. I always wanted to be yeah, a salon owner. I always wanted yeah. to be a good employee and that's about it. Do my job and do it well. So I'm very happy that we got to this stage now because, like I said, I have great staff. They all, you know, they've got their idea after working a long day supporting. Yeah. That's so great. It's, it's Makes it awesome. worth it. Yeah. So a couple of, of cool questions coming in. So number one, which I had just asked Marina earlier, uh, from Ada Gershberg, is your background Russian? Tell us a little bit about your background. I am Ukrainian. Ukrainian? I speak Russian. I've been corrected, you know, because of Instagram, we find all these great hairdressers all over the world, and a few times I've said, great work from Russia, and it's actually from the Ukraine. Ukraine. Yeah. And I've learned now, I mean, you know, Sorry, I'm ignorant American. I don't like, care. Yeah, I learned. I think a lot of people do. Yeah. Uh, so I came to America. You know, at one point it was all part of the Soviet Union, but yeah. now it's a former USSR. Yeah. yeah. The, U the Ukraine is its own country, and Russia is its own country. For so. now, but you know. For now. Oh, For now. Yeah. In the next couple of years. Right. Uh, so I came to America 23 years ago. How old were you when you came here? I was two. Two. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, it sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. Let's leave it That's at that. A, yeah. So you were two when you came. I was uh, early teenage years when I came here. So yeah. So Jason has just tuned in. Jason? He says, great job. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, he's having fun watching you. Awesome. And let's see. So we've had a question from Shakira Marie Marsh Williams. Okay. She wants to know if you ever get bored of being a hairdresser. Hell no. Hell no. Uh, How come? You know, you know, we all have bad days, obviously. Uh, I don't get bored because I don't have a choice. There's nothing out there that I would want to do. If I get bored, then I whip out a doll head, I cut my employee's hair, and I do something really creative that's something that's going to spike my, my interest and just relive the reasons why I became a hairdresser. I think um, not only I love doing hair, I like how it makes people feel and what it, it does to a person, to their features and their personality and how they react when they get a good haircut. So, so that tell us, will be definitely absolutely let's, let's get into the blow dry because I use a very specific method of blow drying hair and a different type of brush from what a lot of our viewers probably use. Tell us a little bit about your blow dry technique, your brush, your blow dryer, yep. and the technique itself. Sure. So this is probably my favorite blow dryer and blow dry to do with the you know the same same brush that I use all the time. So this is a nine roll vest brush, which I believe. Yeah, is you can get those at Hairbrain Pro. Oh, look at you. Uh, yeah, yeah. you can get those at Hairbrain Pro. That's right. Not the yellow color. Currently, we're sold out of yellow, yeah. but we have a full wood grain, which is really which nice. Which is beautiful. Yeah. And we've got a blue, a blue mat. Yep. Uh, so this is called wrap drying. 
Uh, Rap Drawing is originated, I believe, in Sassoon World, right, Gerard? Is that correct? Rap Drawing, yeah. yes. So yeah. what I love about Rap Drawing is it takes the, the shape of the head, since obviously most of us, or hopefully all of us, have a round head shape. I don't really have to work so hard in creating a natural fall of the hair. It's like so, the head's a roller and you're dragging the head exactly. around the roller. That's so kind of how we used I to describe it. Blow drying, so I'm pushing the hair towards the side and then my blow dryer is sort of following how I'm blow drying. Then I'm going to switch my blow dryer and my hands go the opposite direction. And what that's going to do is release any of calyx or any growth pattern that you might have at the scalp and create a bit more balance. Oh, uh, bounce to the end. So, so we can see that beautiful graduation and then you'll come back and work on the outline later. Yep. But that's sitting beautifully. Yep. Okay, so Josh and Monica is watching. Hi Josh. And Josh wants Josh to know how your fades are coming along. Uh, my fades, I think I got a, a, an hour and a half long fade the other day. Hour yeah. and a half long fade. I'm just a joke. Yeah, same Josh for me. Josh has 22 second fade. Yeah. Perfect. Same Josh, for me. It takes me better. My brother, I've been fading recently. Yeah. Which I haven't done many fades in my life. It's just not the kind of hair. Not person easy. That I do. Yeah. Right? And I always go with things. It's going to be simple. I'm going to stick to the game plan. Yeah. And then you got like a dog chasing his tail. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. But I need some Josh and Monica training too. Josh uh, yeah. did a class in here. Uh, it was a four day class. Josh, we need a master uh, class. Awesome. He's, uh, if you want to follow our amazing barber, he's the man. Yeah, <laughs> men's fire, Josh and Monica. So you've talked about a lot of your mentors. You've talked about Jason Hunt coming out and training you, Jacob Kahn. So lots of people are asking, do you do classes? I do, absolutely. I do classic cutting only. I, you know, stick to what you, do, what, what you, what I'm comfortable with, yeah. that's what I truly appreciate and love. Uh, so yeah, we do education in here in the salon. We close the salon down every Tuesday for education day. Uh, for so is that just staff. for the staff or do you bring outside people in if somebody wanted to come and take a class with you? Uh, we do that as well. We are in the process of offering a little more classes in here with me and hopefully my staff as well. Uh, but yes, I am up for hire to do classes as well. I love for hire. I love that. So if somebody wanted to uh, get in touch with you or follow you, now we mentioned earlier, but lots of people have just joined, where would they find you on Instagram? And that's, you know, one of the things, I've known Marina for a really long time, but I noticed recently all these incredible videos that she's been putting out, which is, first of all, so giving to do that, and that's the kind of people we want in the hair brand world, putting out these incredible videos for everyone to learn from. If people want to watch your videos, I know you have a YouTube and an Instagram, tell them where they can find you. Yeah, my name is on Instagram is Marina Lanthos Hair. Uh, my YouTube link is right in my bio. Uh, if you have any questions about classes, you can either message me on Instagram or my email is hairdressermarina at gmail. Which awesome. is pretty simple to, to remember. Awesome. And at later, you know, these videos all are saved. So you can kind of go to that point and write it down if you missed it there. Or Marina can go through the comments later, which is great because, you know, there's always so many questions that are hard to get to. My poor husband's going to hate that. Oh, yeah. No, no, I stay up all night that. answering questions. Yeah. And, yeah. That's we got to do, do. We gotta do. Yeah. a lot of love coming in for you. It's amazing. Lots of people are really enjoying the way that you're blow drying. It's such a simple, effective way that I've found in my 26 years as a hairdresser, so many hairdressers never really learned it or kind of learned I, to appreciate it. You know, your haircut is only as good as your blowout, right? You can do a phenomenal haircut, but if you can't refine it and you don't do a good blowout to work with that haircut, how are you going to know if you did a good job? And how are you going to cross check to make sure that your finishing touches are perfect? Yeah, so the idea of this blow dry is to just expose the haircut. Yes. So you're not putting any unusual body, you're not you're not really even styling the haircut, you're smoothing it, Absolutely. bringing out the cut itself. It's a certain philosophy in hairdressing where the cut is the style and the blow dry just is to make the hair shiny and smooth so that you can see the haircut. And I realize a lot of viewers that's something that maybe they don't work with or mm -hmm. it's different to them. But in this case, yeah. you know, with precision cutting especially, if I you were to go notice. in and put a lot of curl or, or roundness, you couldn't really then perfect you're your cut. A different silhouette it's a different kind of cut. I do notice that whenever I teach cutting classes, and we do a bob, or we do a classic round brush right away. Round brush is yeah. their favorite brush, and yeah. you know, of course. It's not a bad thing, but it, for this kind of work, it, it doesn't, you know, it's like kind of putting an anchovy on peanut butter. 
It just doesn't go together. Well, Jelly yeah, and peanut butter. Some people. Anchovy on pizza? All right. Anchovy on peanut butter? No. Certain things go together. Anchovy yeah. in your Caesar salad dressing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How would you style his hair if, if she had curly hair? Uh, if well, it depends. Did How curly would be my my uh, question. So if someone has really curly hair and they only wear their hair natural, I would probably change the shape of the haircut just a little bit. I maybe wouldn't do such a heavy graduation because I wouldn't want it to bell out and look like a triangle on someone's head. Uh, and if they wear their hair curly, I would style it curly. I would diffuse it, put proper products in to emphasize the natural texture. So again, lots and lots of love coming in, guys, from all over the world, which we appreciate. Marina definitely setting a strong example of great disciplined haircutting, beautiful finishing, simple beautiful finishing. I noticed you changed brushes. Can you tell us a little bit about why? I did. So this is my newly uh, discovered brush. So newly discovered brush. That's why I'm interested. Yes. Yeah, so this is creative. Creative. Okay, yeah, it's a New, York, a New York brush company, yeah. Uh, I think guy, Jacob is the guy that owns the company, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You're, you're, you're yeah. Know I know everybody, company. listen, yeah. I'd be surprised if I didn't. Uh, so what I like about this brush is that it really polish the ends, and it almost gives you an appearance as I flat iron the hair. Because I still have to go in and do the outline, and uh, I want to make sure that all of the ends are as straight and as perfect as possible. But I also don't want to flat iron the hair. I feel like flat ironing takes the personality out of the hair. It makes it so smooth and so flat. It's, it's almost no the movement. opposite of like yeah. round brushing. We kind of went through a period, maybe as long ago as 10 years ago, where if it moved, everybody flat ironed it. Yeah. And then they put chemicals on it to make it stay exactly like that. Yeah. And then I think everybody kind of said, hey, wait a minute, I think we killed hair. Yep. It's the same thing that happened with the perm. You know, in the in the late 70s and to the 80s, if it moved, you permed it. And you tried to make as much texture as you could. And then people said, we killed hair. And perms still haven't come back. And I think the same things kind of happens in a flat iron slowly. Um, I, I, I would pick up a flat iron probably in five or six years, to be completely honest with you, for anything. The only time but, I pick up a flat iron is when I am doing a dry cut. And they, and again, it depends sure. on that. You said it's all about density, so you just want to see the hair completely flat and straight so that you can chisel out the density. But I would imagine sometimes then you wash it at the end and, and let them wear it more naturally. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right, so a lot of people are just tuning in. Um, Marina, we're here at Atlantic Highlands in New Jersey at Marina's Salon Serenity Lounge. Uh, Marina's just demonstrated a beautiful, classic graduated bob with a little bit of elevation through the top. Beautiful, how there's no weight line, the graduation is perfect. Totally set up for success. Now she's going to come in for the finishing. You yes. guys really want to watch this because this is, is what makes the haircut. Absolutely. This is where it takes pretty graduation and makes it look spot on. Spot on. If you do a good job, right? If you do a good job. <laughs> All right. Or, or you'd be crying right now. Or, I'll be like, how the hell am I going to fix this? Yes. Josh, get the clippers out. <laughs> Josh, come back. All right. All right so, so Jordan does not have any restrictions. You know, Jordan is a hairdresser, like we mentioned before. She doesn't really care what I do. So, what I would like to do is I can use these pieces. So, this is an undercut that Jordan's been growing out. So, this is an existing length that I am going to be working with. So, I really love how that will appear right through here. It creates a really strong outline. So, I'm going to use this as a guide and then just get rid of all of this hair that we have on the neck. So, I am going above the hairline, which makes it a little bit more creative. A nice twist on it. Okay, so you've decided to start in the back. I, yeah, it's my preference to start in the back. And then visually, I am looking, I'm not so much looking at my scissor, I'm looking at the area that I want to. To kind of Your target. Up. Yes, yep. and then I have to find the ear to make sure that I don't cut it. And you're using just, just the kind of front of a very, very sharp, beautiful scissor. That's our Kari New Cosmos. Beautiful for this kind of cutting. Yes. And you went right above the hairline. And I would imagine you're going to remove what's beneath there. We're, we're going to talk about it. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll leave it. Maybe. Yeah, I've seen, you know, our good friends, um, uh, Ben Crace and James Mould and Johnny Athona. They've all been doing interesting things with hairlines. You know, Actually leaving some of that stuff and making it kind of an asset. As long as it makes sense to you and it's pleasant to look at, right? Yeah, there's only two people that have to be happy with the haircut, right? You and the, and the person you did it on. Well, technically <laughs> just you. <laughs> yeah. Jordan, I could see your ears moving. 
Her ears are just wiggling around. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So I have a fear of cutting people. Not well, because should. Not because I care that they're going to be hurt, but it's more so because I would pass out. You don't like blood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Not a fan of... <laughs> Awesome. All so again, the girls in here know that. Lots of love coming in. Everyone just, you know, so excited to see you and, and very complimentary, which is fantastic. Um, and, and I guess they like what we're saying. Ruby Devine says, amen. Hi, Ty Ruby. Wilson says, beautiful Marina. I'm a hairstylist in Bermuda. We need you here. Yes, Who please. did your cut? I love yours. Jason did my All hair. All right, cut. so Jason Hunt cut your hair. Jason hooked me up nice. at the end of a class. And then we have a colorist, Rachel, who... Bleached my hair and made this beautiful color. Yeah, Dara Smith, who's who watches pretty much all of our stuff. Thank you, Dara. Big big love. Perfect haircut. I love it and I love the color. Thank, Thank you. you. Again, guys, if you have questions for Marina, she would love to what to share answers with you. Uh, Shakira, we're in Atlanta, Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey. Yep, and uh, it is evening here. Some people are in different parts of the world wondering where we are, what we're doing, and that's where we are. Awesome. So let's get back into this haircut because this is a really great part. So right through here. So what I usually do is when I want to remove more length, I go ahead and cut blunt. So I'm going to get in front of here. So to remove and then as I'm closing the scissor, I move the scissor back. So I'm closing the scissor on the way out. This way I'm not pushing the hair. So I removed the weight. I went in, I chipped into it because the hairline is sticking up a little tiny bit. So I want to make sure that I loosen up that texture a little tiny bit. Obviously, anything that goes below the hairline, I'm going to remove afterwards. So through here, now I'm going to assess how the bone structure is. So I usually use the mirror as my, as my buddy, as my friend. And then figure out where I want the length to oh, the to balance sit through is, here. is perfect. Thank it's you. beautiful. Just this, where this graduation sits in regards to what's happening through there. Yeah, that's so perfect. right where... You the, nailed it! Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of that, those ends just a little bit and sit in the graduation from the separation from the outline to the graduation to come to a nice point right in the front. Thanks for mentioning it, Ruby. Ruby Devine is saying, you know, that obviously the industry has been kind of color obsessed, but it's great to see some great haircutting showcased again. At Hairbrain, we've always been kind of haircutting obsessed. Of course, we love color, uh, but we've definitely are... Nothing better than a single process. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like single process. Nothing better than a single process. This is, for me, is perfect, yeah. It, it could be yellow, could be black, could be red, could be green, but if it's just one solid color, then I can do much cooler haircuts, for me anyway. Ruby does some... Some amazing work too. I follow her. She does a lot of creative work, a lot of creative color. So tell us a little bit about that. You know, I think um, obviously the social media, things like Instagram and YouTube and Facebook have really changed the industry. How has it affected you? I mean, it seems like you've met a lot of different people and you've had people come to your salon. Yeah. So, you know, what, 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 um, what's it done for you? So I think Instagram and social media, you know, it, it's, you have like a love-hate relationship with it. It gives a platform <laughs> say that again. to, to yeah. anyone, or yeah. anyone who wants to cut hair can cut hair. Anyone who wants to color and become an educator can do that as well. So, but what I love about it is if you are willing to put in the hours and work hard and do the right thing for, on social media, it can really open doors for you. So if the it gate, wasn't The gatekeepers are gone. If yeah. you've got message and a talent and passion, you've got a platform to share it and you can find your tribe. Absolutely. Yeah, which is amazing. So if it wasn't for Instagram, I, you know, you guys wouldn't be here. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have met Josh and Jason, Alan Lon and, you know. Because that London crew is definitely popping. They, they sure are. They need a New, a New Jersey crew now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. They we're were, they were trying to get Gerard um, to London to cut hair together. Marina, you have to hop on a plane with us. Yeah. I'll be there. out there. I'll cut yeah. hair. For, uh, for that trip, I'll do a haircut. There you That's, go. Yeah. All right, so let's get, back to the, let's get back to the haircut here. So I, you're working in the mirror. You've put your, your perimeter in after you did your graduation. Mm-hmm. Now you're kind of in the refining stage. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. So what are you I, looking for? I usually go through and I cross-check. You know, if, 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 if I had three hours, I can go through and recheck this whole haircut. And every little piece of hair that's out of the way... I would cut off blunt first and make sure that it looks 
I don't see much to cut off, though. Is there? What exactly would you cut off? It's my good side. Oh, okay. It's my good side. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Wait, cool. Yeah. I don't see anything that you so, would... Make me look bad. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so it's the hair. It's really the bleached hair. It really hides things. Now, uh, so I go through and I make sure that the graduation and my technical skill was done perfectly. Then I go through and remove the heaviness of a blunt line that I created. So because it's hair that's you know I also don't really enjoy it to be so so flat so I'm gonna go through and remove the heaviness of the hair anything that grows on the top of the round of the head working over my fingers elevate much higher than the the elevation while I was cutting almost across to the opposite side of the head yeah, yeah. yep so what that does it creates some shorter pieces or in the length some invisible layers in there it won't it won't distract from the graduation but you'll have some really invisible Absolutely. pieces and talk a little bit about the angle of your scissor when you do that because it can make a huge difference couldn't yeah. it yeah so what I like to say is when I talk about point cutting I always say that it's chipping not chopping so you want to make sure that you only use your still blade so just your thumb or use the movable blade and the still blade is still and uh, always keep your scissor parallel to the hair if you don't keep it then you're gonna chop into it and you're gonna create a, a new, a new haircut hair. I you mean you literally if you pick that up and your scissor came in on a diagonal you'd actually layer the hair off and change the haircut completely yeah. uh, so which... I'm gonna do the same exact thing right through the top through here first I'm gonna cross check make sure my graduation is pretty this one's great. Christopher Cache. He's in Washington, D.C. He just finished a long shift of hair, and yet he still can't get enough of this. Thank you. Awesome. You know, that's, that's what it means to be hairbrained. You know, that's why we started this, and that's what it's all about. You know, it's, it's more than a job. It's a craft. It's a passion. And when you get around like-minded people, special things happen. And back to what Marina was saying before, that's what social media has done. It's united yeah. this tribe of super passionate people. I finally found a spot. So I'm gonna use oh, let's see example. it. Oh, let's see. So right oh, my here, God. I have a little tiny bit of a knuckle mark. Yes, too you much do. tension. Too in there. much. Yeah. It must have been. Oh. It must have been. I'm going to blame you guys. You probably asked me a hard question. Two question. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I did is if I do find something that's minor enough that can be cut off and it's not like a huge chunk of hair that's left over there, what I usually do is I hold their elevation that I was cutting and then cut and lift my fingers as I do that. So what that creates is a softer and the result to um, to the silhouette. That just kind of bevels the line a little bit. I think, you know, so, some people, myself included, call it filtering. Filtering. Where just by lightly kind of I filtering. Just photoshopped this hair Just <laughs> editing it a little bit, filtering it a little bit. I love that, you know, that, that language. I can't remember the first person I heard say it, but, like, you're editing the haircut now. You know, little pieces. Oh refining them, softening them, kind of filtering them down. All right, so now we're into the hairline on the opposite side? Yes. All right, so take us through, because I'm sure some people didn't see you do it on the first side. All right, so here's my visual point. So on this side, I am going to start from the front. And can you explain for the people who just tuned in um, that spot, how did we get that? That's a grow so, out? Yeah, so this through here never reached th through my haircut, maybe it's some of these pieces. From the existing yeah, haircut, this was an undercut, out. yeah. That journal was growing out from a while back. So sort of using those pieces as my as my guide. I want to make sure that the outline is going to meet the same point on the head. Look straight from here for a sec. Lots of love coming in. People are really excited to see precision hair cutting. Which is, you know, it's interesting because I think for a minute there, you know, people have kind of taken their eye away from it. And it's kind of, you know, how hairdressers are. We can be like squirrels, dog. You know, we just like, <laughs> we see something and we go after it. But those of us that have been doing it for a while always say the classics come back. And the foundation is always super important. And I've seen everything go around 15 times already. You know, I've seen crazy color. I wonder 80s. when the feather is going to come it. back. Oh. The feather? The feather. I, I, I just took mine out. Oh. But it'll come back. The feather will come back. It'll all come back. It all goes around. All right, let's get back into that outline. All right, so on this side, I'm slightly less comfortable going from, from back to the front. So I'm going to change my, my body position. And you know, there are, obviously there are rules that you should follow, but if something makes you feel really uncomfortable, I am all to it, good yeah. with breaking the rule, absolutely. So through here, I feel a little bit more comfortable pushing the hair this way. As long as the hair is straight, I don't have to worry about cutting off too much. Do you ever do these lines with, a, with an edger or a clipper? I've seen that become more popular recently. I've seen Mazella and Palmer, who are brilliant hair cutters, 
doing a lot of stuff with the edger and the clipper. Have you tried that at all? So I cut it first and then I do it. Mm. Because in my mind, I think they probably do the same thing. I, don't yeah, know I would why. imagine. I feel like it would be cheating. Yeah. Even though it's it's not. Why work harder when you can work smarter, right? Yeah, it's your process, though. You yeah. know. So I always get the balance right, and it usually takes me a little while because you know this is not a comfortable thing to do. So once I get the balance right, then I go ahead and use the edger to really make that line really, really strong. So lots of people making comments about how how great your body positioning is when you work. Is there anything you can share about body positioning? Do you have a certain theory or philosophy or anything in general? Yes, move your client in the chair, use the hydraulics of the chair and try to stay as perfect as possible or you'll be paying for it for the rest of your career. Yeah, so you, you try not to kind of slump over, bend from the knees a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's always great advice. Don't bend from the back, bend from the knees. My husband is yeah. a personal trainer. He's taught me well. Right. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Fresh personal tra training and also a... <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Good. Should we give a shout out? There's a uh, website and Instagram. You got to come to my screen. Right on. Right. Yeah, Rob. <laughs> Okay, so let's get back, and now you're starting to use a little bit of point cutting. How did you decide to, to begin to point cut there? So I find that the outline is a little on the heavier side, how it just protrudes from the, from the neck. So I'm removing a little of the weight from the, the outline first, and I'm going to go back in and sharpen the line. So again, that kind of filters the line. Yep, you know, absolutely. That, think, Makes that, it know, sit a little bit leaner. Line, and that, it kind of puts a little bit of graduation on every other hair. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then, of course, after I'm done, and once the balance is good, then I'll go through and trim it up with, um, with an edger. Okay, so Kate Kazan, she maybe missed the beginning. Um, she just wants you to, and I'm sure a lot of people have just joined in, maybe just review how you created this graduation before you check that. Yeah, absolutely. Just walk us through the approach. So my first section, middle part, middle part all the way down to the nape. Then I assessed where I wanted my graduation to sit. So if I wanted to be a little bit on the leaner side, my section was through here, which is pretty vertical. Then my sections pivot from that point, so gradually higher and a little bit wider. So with each section, I got a little bit higher and wider, continued until I got to the about bottom of the apex, top of the O-bone, to right to the top of the ear. So pivoting sections from here, my section continued being exactly the same diagonal section, diagonal forward. And I'm going to ask the question again because I, I'm super interested because I think you've pretty much achieved, I've seen a lot of graduated bulbs in my life, but you've got what I consider the perfect balance, which is the art of the graduated bulb. And my understanding or my belief is it all comes from the first section. Yeah. So tell us a little your, bit about how, how you set that first section in and any tips to get this perfect balance yeah, because so, it can be easily lost. Yeah, absolutely. So what I usually do is even if a client brings a picture in or when I talk to my apprentices when I'm teaching them. So how you hold your fingers, your first initial section, how close you are to the head or how far your, your fingers are away from the head is going to draw a line that's going to be the silhouette of the graduation. So if I want my graduation to sit really lean, I'm going to take a skinnier section taller and it's quite skinny through the hairline and then from that point there it is that's it why is. the balance is perfect because that angle that you created there and what you created right there is what makes that balance perfect which is so beautiful so if i wanted it a little bit heavier i would move my fingers slightly farther away from the head move it away from the head if i want the overall length to be longer and if i wanted to have a bob with graduation and i wanted to have a little bit of corner where the outline is I would create the external shape, so my outline first, then use that guide and, and create the graduation. So if I wanted to sit much, much heavier, so if I want the bob to sit this way, my section will be much more horizontal. Wide, yep. Excellent. So as you get back into your kind of final refining here, here's a, 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 a great question from Maria Tanner. Thanks for joining, Maria. Uh, do you have a harder side? Yes, my yeah. right side. Yeah, your right side. My left side of my face is prettier. My left more photogenic. <laughs> my right side of the haircuts. And you know, I think all of us have a side. <laughs> that was good. I think all of us have a harder and an easier side. So I always, always say, start with your easier side. Establish your guide. 
get your lines look really good on your easier side, then use that as a as a as your goal. As if I say that, if I could say that, mm -hmm. for the other side, um, for does not matter whether it's graduation layers, what shape I'm creating. This is always my harder side, and my other side. So if you look at my Instagram. That's the you do everything for the oh, always <laughs> going to be yeah. the other yeah, side. I mean, interestingly enough, yeah. as you know, someone who's taught lots of people, I find that whatever your handedness is is usually your harder side. So right-handed people have a harder time on the right side because of body position. You naturally shift your body more to the left, so you tend to overdirect. Mm -hmm. You kick your fingertips out, um, and it can all be cured by body position. You know, if you kind of put a mirror in front of you while you're working and you try to make a mirror image, a lot of it doesn't feel natural because what's natural and comfortable isn't always what gives the best geometric haircut. Yeah. Which absolutely. is why a lot of, you know, when you get into free form haircutting, what's natural and comfortable is great. But when you're doing these shapes, there's, there's actually a right and wrong. There really is, you know. There's no right and wrong in free form haircutting. If it looks great, it's great. But with this, it can go wrong, and a lot of it has to do with body position. Can I say that's why Instagram, right? This is the hate comes in. But Instagram <laughs> and social media, anyone can do a really good freeform haircut yeah. and crazy color. If you're going to filter it and, and, and do some crazy stuff and take a really good picture afterwards. Mm -hmm. So, but if you could do a good bob, I think you're, I think you're good in your... Yeah. Well, I'm blown away. And I've seen a lot of graduated bobs, and I've worked with some great She's people. Got perfect head She shape. does, yeah. but you know what? You have to, suitability is half the battle. Yeah. If absolutely. you pick the wrong head, the wrong hair to try to do a precision haircut on, it doesn't matter how good you are. Mm -hmm. You know, you're kind of always trying to fix something. So making the right choice and choosing the right hair, and that is a big part of, of training and precision haircutting, is suitability, picking the right head shape, the right hair texture, the right person. Okay, let's get back in. Now you're refining as you did on the other side. So I'm refining sure just really the top of the parietal ridge to right to the top or of the apex through here and really only so that the bob sits in a little bit more playful. Um, I know Jordan is not going to be blow drying her hair this smooth or this straight. Um, most likely. Why not, Jordan? You need to work harder. <laughs> you need to wake no up 10 way. minutes earlier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sea salt spray. Sea, sea salt spray. spray. <laughs> so I want to make sure when Jordan goes home, Budweiser. she doesn't have <laughs> Marina next to her blow drying her hair. Uh, I want it to be very versatile, where it looks good, straight and smooth, and at the same time has lots of movement if she wears it a little bit more messier. I, I like to see the shape this way, um, really straight and perfect. And then I like to mess it up afterwards and see the, all the movement because how fun does it look, you know, when you when you can see all the movement. You know, it's great to know what you like and have a process and a way that you do things. Um, what are some things that are maybe surprising and new for you? So obviously this is your comfort zone. This is what you love to do. What are some things, I, I noticed you mentioned earlier, you said you are trying to do some fading. What other things are you doing that make you feel uncomfortable? Uh, you know, anything creative. Mm. Uh, well, what's it say, what do you mean by creative, though? Disconnections. Okay. So I would say they're definitely... OCD. You want everything to blend. You literally have... Yeah. yeah. And you know, you figure you out where yeah. you put the disconnection and what it's going to do, and then you do it, and you're like, oh, but I just want to blend this. It doesn't yeah. make I've sense. I've never had that yet. problem. I want nothing to blend. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, for me, it was such a struggle. We should work next to each yeah. other, too. Uh, it was such a struggle at Sassoon. I had to force myself because like, I never wanted anything to blend. Even when I was doing the basics, like ladies' basic layer, I was like, can I just leave this piece out? It would look so much prettier. No. 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 I think the, the undercut really definitely at the beginning, like, I just don't understand. Why do you want to cut a piece of, like, chunk of hair out to make something look, <laughs> I, I didn't get it. But the whole uh, disconnection made sense a little bit more once the undercut became quite popular. So obviously a lot of people out there are saying, wow, this is super creative. Ruby is saying this is incredibly creative. But in your mind, because everything is designed and angled and blending. This is as classy as classic. Vanna Gap. Yeah, it's just that it's yellow. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and it's also the suitability, because you put it on the right face, she wears her makeup the right way, yep. the color, all that. Yep. A lot of the, the classic work. You know, do, do you ever try to combine a few, you know, because this is kind of how we started at Sassoon's after we would learn all these classics. 
then we would combine a few classics together and allow for a little disconnection. You know, do this panel at the back, but then do a rounder graduation and leave a little bit over. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've I've started playing. I think after I took the Alamon class, I think I was yeah. like, I'm just going to do the same the exact zones. thing. Did you go to London start, and train with no, them? No, they came here. They came here. Jonathan Corby came here and right did a on. class for in your salon. Yep. Amazing. This salon's yeah. got it going on. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. You got it going that on was... here in Jersey. That was that was rough that class. <laughs> that <laughs> Jonah was here as well. Rough in what way? Rough in the way where I wanted to kill Jonathan. <laughs> you yep. got it work out. But we still we're still buddies. We're still good. But it was um it was a lot of information a lot of information that was never shared with me. And I think for anyone who has any type of need to know and you know that precision is the way to go in their in their mind, which is for me, I need to know every reasoning and why this falls a certain way. That we, was we, have a, we have a Mr. Scribbles moment here. Right? <laughs> Matthew, Maddie, now I know him as Maddie. Anyone can make the simple complex, but creativity is making the complex simple. That's right. Oh, wow. I had that in a fortune cookie last night. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, sometimes he calls a, a lob a long but a robber, oh, yeah. right? But sometimes he says deep things like that and it totally makes sense. So I know Absolutely. you have some of his work. I have a beautiful five point that he did for my wife's commission for me, you know, because I'm kind of known for my five point tattoo. Ah, look so at that. So he did a, a, yeah, yeah. a scribbled version of the five point, which is beautiful. If you go on my Instagram, you can see it. And I know he's done one for you because did he do like a veil or Havington? He did the Havington, which was always my favorite, favorite I want haircut. that haircut. Yep. I could do that for you. Yeah. <laughs> I need a haircut so bad. So I saw, I saw the Havington and I said, can I have one of those? And he said, no. He didn't really turn me down. He said, no, but he only does one. That's that right. I've piece. been bugging him for it. And that was his parting gift for Jessica and I. Hey, Ronnie. Yes, it is Gerard. How you doing? That's me right here. Yep. Okay, awesome. So again, guys, last minute questions. Okay, so Kelsey wants to know how does she follow you on Instagram? Marina Lantos. Marina hair. Lantos at Marina Lantos Hair. Yep. And then of course, Hairbrained Official. Hopefully, most of you guys are watching and following us already. And um, let's get into some some final closing thoughts here. So just in the ends, right through here, I'm using the trimmers, but I'm almost like petting the outside of my outline through here, just so to sit it in. On the oh, a little tiny yeah. bit, because my graduation was above this line. So, and because I removed a decent amount, I created almost like a line, create a corner. So I want to soften that corner. I can go ahead and point cut into it a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of refining, re refining, refining after the camera is off to make sure it's perfect, but for a quicker visual, I think that's beautiful. Great. Beautifully hugs into the neck. Love it. Graduation's beautiful. Seamless, I think, is a great word to describe it. Okay. There's been, again, lots of questions about the color again coming up. So Marina did a double process here with Wella Blondor, I would imagine. Um, and you lifted the hair, is that right? Yep, lifted to a pale, it was like a, I would say, level nine. We left a little bit of gold. You didn't want to worry about over-processing the hair because yellow on top of yellow would be a yeah. brighter yellow. Yep. Uh, and yep. then you used what to get this beautiful kind of highlighter yellow? This was Pravana Vivid's neon yellow, which is looks just as bright in the tube as it does on the hair. <laughs> Left it on for 30 minutes under heat and just rinse with cold water. There are actually quite a few questions too about before you started your blow dry, did you use any product and what I did, did you use? I used Kevin Murphy uh, Young Again. Yep. Young Again. So Young Again Wait, is... Um, can you spray that on my face? Young again. Uh, so this is heat protectant, makes um, makes the hair a little bit easier to blow dry, creates a little bit more of a softer texture to the hair. So in this way. Screen. Fantastic. It, it's looking incredible. Um, I think everyone out there can appreciate a real craftsperson when they see one. And it's been a pleasure spending time with you. I know you want to keep cutting. Thank you. But, yeah, you do we will keep cutting. But let's, let's give that one, one great turnaround here. Beautiful. Again, I've seen a lot of graduated bobs in my day, but this one is really perfect. Really beautiful. Nailed it. Nailed it. Great job, guys. We'll see you soon. Yay. Peace. Thank you.